And we're back and we wanted to talk about uh, transportation funding and Proposition CC, so we went and found a couple of lobbying class guys in suits and ties <laughs> to talk about that with us. Uh, one of them over here, Kelly Sloan. How are you, Kelly? Doing well, thanks for having me. Lobby. Actually, columnist over at uh, coloradopolitics.com. In addition to being, you're a registered lobbyist, right? I am. You do yes. that kind of thing? Yeah, I am part of the problem, yes. You are part of the problem <laughs> down there? Ro <laughs> Roger Hudson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part, big part of the problem? Big part of the problem. There's transportation funding? Where, what do you know that I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> so no, you're going to tell us. There's, someone's funded transportation. Uh, who knew that? Uh, and, a politi and a consultant. And a consultant, well. yeah. Right. And a lobbyist. And a lobbyist. And a lobbyist. So, so we, yeah, we, were just we were just talking about it. Oh. lobbyists uh, before cameras rolled. So, all right, so here's what I've heard um, is the, this idea of a special session that's been floating around. Is, sure. It's off the table. Yeah, but now It's too late. It's not going to happen. We're going to go to the beach instead. So you're going to go to the beach instead. Yep. So what that basically means is that this Proposition CC moves forward. It's on the ballot mm -hmm. already. Theoretically, there'll be a campaign to try and support it, sure. although we haven't seen one yet. Right. And I think... And you can tell me what you think. I, I don't think this thing has a chance in hell of passing. Well, let's assume it does. Mm -hmm. And voters are willing to permanently give up their Tabor refunds. Mm -hmm. The promise is that some of that money in Prop CC will go to transportation. What are the chances of that actually happening, Kelly? Well, I think if you look at it historically, it's slim to none. Uh, but it depends on what you're talking about transportation funding, what the, what the term means to you or I or... Roger, maybe most of our viewers, is significantly different than what it means to a lot of the authors of Proposition CC. Uh, when we talk about transportation funding, we're talking about increasing capacity, doing road improvements, making I-25 bearable to drive on, uh, you know, uh, uh, that kind of thing. You'll make it easier to drive ourselves around the state. What I think a lot of the people uh, that are kind of running the state right now look at transportation funding, they're thinking anything other than individual ownership of a car. They're thinking, uh, quote unquote, intermodal, mass, tran mass transit, bike lanes, that kind of thing. So, uh, so I think there's a little bit of a disconnect between what people are saying is transportation funding and what they actually mean in terms of transportation funding or what, they, what people are perceiving transportation funding should be and what uh, you know, some people are having in their minds they're gonna actually provide when they get all this, uh, that's, this that's, windfall. That's fair enough. The, the you got to define your terms sometimes before you before you can talk about it over here. Was there a? Well, let's just assume for a minute that transportation funding might mean widening roads. Any right. chance of if Prop CC passes, what are the chances of roads actually getting widened? Well, well I, first of all, I have to I have to mention something about that because it was really funny because actually in 109 and 110 when that was presented, I remember as I was reading all the fine print, it was talking about sidewalks. I was like. Sidewalks. Well, transportation. It's, side, it's transportation. Sure. Sidewalks there directly there are, are could, transportation. Could be transportation. Yeah. So it was kind of funny. You're, you're talking. You're talking. Let's let's back up for a second. Sure. You're talking about last year. Sure. Yeah. Two measures yeah, right. to address Competing. transportation. Right. One of them I was a proponent on, sure, along sure, sure. with my my boss John right. Caldera, Prop 109. Mm -hmm. So voters were not down for bonding nope. without a tax increase, nope. mm -hmm. but they were also not down for bonding right. with a tax right. increase. Right. Right. They right. said no to all of that. Right. And no so, good plan. No good plan. And this has been going. This this idea of uh, no good plan for transportation. This is not new. Right. We're in a decade of this now. Sure. And so if CC passes. They say that at least part of that money goes to. And let's just say we're talking about a big pie of transportation stuff. Sure. All kind of things. Right. Any chance it actually happens? No. <laughs> no. And, 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 and I don't think there's. I mean, I, why don't you tell us what you really think? Well, right? I think it's really easy. No. I mean, I'm, I'm going to believe people when they tell me what they are, and they're telling me that they don't care. Um, and I would say that about the voters too. If they really cared, then they would hold lawmakers' feet to the fire. I mean, we're talking about a $9 billion deficit in transportation. We've gotten so used to it now that it's a joke. Uh, I mean, I call people, and I'm like, I'm stuck on I-25. I've been stuck on I-25 for an hour. Ha, 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 ha. You know, it's something we've become so used to that now it's just part of Colorado lore. Uh, I mean, we're now competing with big cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago. It's where we are. Where are we putting our money? We're putting it in rail. We're putting it in empty cars as you watch, you know, these cars that are rolling away. As you're sitting on a freeway, you're watching these cars roll by. Uh, there is no short-term plan, which you look at when you go and see CDOT speak. And, I, and, and gosh, and I have lots of friends there, and, and I think they're well-meaning, but when you go and listen to them, you see two diverging paths. You see the Band-Aid, let's make the roads doable today. Let's just get people to where they're going today. And then you see this path 20, 30 years from now, 
that doesn't address things like two years, three years, five years from now, which is scary, dangerous, because you have things happen that are like rock slides, where you have boulders the size of houses that fall on roads. So you don't have this immediate planning. You have you know, hyperloops and you have you know, automated cars and things that, you know, if you want to talk about sci-fi, we can do that, but I want to be able to talk about how I'm going to get to work, you know, in five years, or how am I going to, if I want to work in Denver and I live in Douglas County like I do, what am I, how am I going to plan for that? Um, there's just not that vision there, and there's definitely not a, any kind of plan to write a check for it. Um, and you don't see any, any plan or, or desire to talk about it from the Democrats. I mean, you said the people in charge. Let's call it who it is. It's the Democrats. Sure. Uh, when you hear Jared Polis speak, and you know, Jared's a nice guy, well-intentioned, but he comes from education. When he talks, he talks about education. He doesn't ever talk about transportation. There's no hunger there. I mean, I was at CML. Uh, you know, this, these are all city leaders. Nobody even asked him about transportation. Well, well and when he does talk about transportation, it's things like this zero emission vehicle mandate that's uh, uh, being being pushed on us, uh, the California mandate. Uh, sure. It, it's, things like, it's things like you talked about, the, the, the intermodal net, you know, kind of this ideological uh, paintbrush that they put over the transportation funding. Uh, you know, but it, it's interesting, whenever you, you have the discussion over any state fiscal matter, uh, in particular around taxation, Tabor, that kind of thing, and in particular with anybody whose political inclinations lean leftward, it always comes around to, well, we need money for education, transportation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll throw in public safety. Well, let's concede this much. If those were what we were talking about, uh, transportation, education, public safety, let's concede that we'd be happy, three of us at this table, to fully fund all those three things. We, there's sure. some pretty broad acceptance among most people that those are legitimate roles for the state government to do. So why then do you want to go and ask for a tax increase for stuff everybody pretty much agrees you already need. We have a $30 billion budget that was signed this year. We're talking about, what was it, the figure, $9, $9 billion mm -hmm. uh, that we need to backfill for transportation uh, right. projects. Just to catch us up. We have the money there. It's, it's an issue of prioritization. It's kind of like a, hou a householder, you know, if I, if I went home, looked at my budget and said, well, gee, I need to uh, take an extra job, uh, you know, stocking shelves at night so I can, you know, pay for rent and uh, groceries, when in the meantime, I'm, the money I'm making already is going towards uh, rent on my trampoline and uh, a video game console or something like that. It's 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 just a matter of prioritization, and you know the priorities are, are different, I think, from what most people in the state think of when you think of transportation funding and what they are among the. Uh, I, I Lean think I, I think so. <clears throat> I, I think, and this goes back to, and we by the way, we, it's not like this is like new territory. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go back and right. call, call, look at the ref seat shuffle. So <laughs> right, which right. which meant that yeah. yes, there were the things that people yeah. said money back referendum C, sure. the five year timeout from the taxpayers' bill of rights revenue limits. People said the money will go to this, 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 and this. And guess what? Money went to that, 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 and that. And then they took all the existing sure. money and moved it off and spent right. it on something else. So basically, like, they did wait a minute. Back, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, wait yeah. a minute. So, yeah. so you, your your point is well taken. Right. That um, uh, um, so are we going to see a ref CC shuffle? But again, I don't think it's going to no. pass. But I don't think so either. There's no. no hunger for it, and I, I don't think there's a real good explanation for it either. And that doesn't mean that Tabor's safe. I don't think it is. I don't think there's a, a really good explanation to the to a younger generation, a younger voter, of of what Tabor is or the value of it. Uh, I don't think Republicans have done a really good job. I don't think cons conservatives have done a good job about how valuable that is and how it saved Colorado. Colorado is in the place that it is economically uh, and where we are in innovation. Uh, some of the vibrancy you see in Aurora uh, comes from Tabor. Uh, it stopped government from spending and overspending in a way that other states did when the recession hit uh, that really kept us being as vibrant as we are right now. I think, I think Democrats, Republicans, everybody would concede that. Um, a new generation of lawmakers, I don't think they remember that. I don't think Tabor's safe. I don't think it's safe at all. I would, I, I, I would agree with that. And I, I, I would agree that I think uh, CC is in trouble. I wouldn't put high hopes on its uh, passage if I was a proponent of it. And I think that explains the appetite that you saw for the special session to try and fix mm -hmm. some of these more distasteful elements of it, the permanence, you know, forever is a long time as, they, as the saying goes. Um, but I do agree that uh, you know Tabor is in trouble. There are some fairly concerted efforts. We saw some court cases recently that sure. said you can uh, eliminate Tabor, the single subject 
matter doesn't apply. It was successful. Apparently, uh, covering five or six things as one subject. I made the argument in a previous column that uh, perhaps we can make that argument for repealing the last uh, uh, legislative session. Oh. We're just talking about one thing, right? It's one thing, one big thing. Yeah. One, one big thing. I, I'll tell you, you guys make this case that Tabor's in trouble. I'm not necessarily sure that's the case. Mm -hmm. Tabor, when, when explained, mm -hmm. Tabor polls well but when? the general public. Mm -hmm. When? When but explained. When? Yeah. Here's the interesting thing. I think that Prop CC, and if this full repeal ever goes forward, I see them as excellent opportunities to educate a whole bunch of people who have moved here in the last decade right. and don't even know what this is. Sure. Yeah. Right. What it is. Yeah. And when they find out what it is, they're going to dig it. Yeah. I, I think. Anyway, yeah. you think? What, what, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You tell people that yeah, you get to control what the state legislature does, how they're spending. That uh, if they're going to tax you, you get to say no. Uh, yeah, people love that. Uh, absolutely. They love having that last switch of saying before you get to add an extra tax to me. Especially when you tell them all the things that an extra tax is. You know, that means fees. That means all right. these extra things that they get to sneak in on you. Uh, ever, who doesn't like that? Who, who doesn't love that control? To me, it was never about refunds. To me, it was always about that. I get that last rubber stamp. If you're gonna if you're gonna tax me and bill me, I get to say yay or nay on okay. that. For me, that was always the power of it. You, Great. Tabor isn't trouble. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to go after it, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's an excellent opportunity to educate a whole bunch of Coloradans who, who may oh, not know what it is. Absolutely. You know, if we, if we take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, I think, what are I you think saying? People wouldn't? Is that what, you, what are you trying to say? Well, no, <laughs> I, I, I say that <laughs> there's. Listen. Well, I, yeah, if, if people listen, I think that, uh, again, there's going to be a uh, strongly concerted effort, as there has been you know, for quite some time. I mean, Tabor is absolutely hated by. Um, uh, but I. I I do think you know we, we need to we need to stay on it. I think we need to uh, be very diligent yeah. in keeping people in the prize of what it actually is and what it's done for the state's economy. Right. We're out of time. Thanks, gents. Thanks for coming by. Uh, thank you. Check us out at completecolorado.com. We'll see you next week.